What's up you guys? My name is Kaylin and welcome to my channel where we discuss, break down, and recommend movies and TV shows and occasionally other forms of media. And for this episode, we are going to be reviewing the recent and controversial biopic on the legend and the tragic Marilyn Monroe. We are going to be talking about the film Blonde. The film is a second adaption to Joyce Carol Oates' book Blonde. I know, right? For me, the film already felt very familiar and not just in the fact that it's another Marilyn Monroe biopic, but the images and plot points were very familiar. Like Marilyn being in this polyamorous relationship with two men, Charles Chaplin Jr. and some other dude who's not really relevant, and the multiple scenes of babies crying in a drawer. I went to Google to look up Marilyn Monroe's biopic from the early 2000s, then all the memories washed all over me. I remember being a kid watching the 2000 version on Lifetime more than once because I was a kid with no taste and no adult supervision. Mm, it was a great time. The film follows the turbulent life of Marilyn Monroe from her troubled childhood to her rise in popularity in films to her death. Jumping right into problems because there is a lot. There, there's a lot, there, there, there's a lot of lots. But the one thing that jumps out to me is the editing. The editing of the film is messy. There's no organic flow as it goes through Marilyn's life. The editing kind of felt a little, I don't know what else word to call it. It felt kind of dated. I don't know, they were taking some inspiration from like the past adaption of Blonde and like the early 2000s dated, like early, like early 2000s, like late 90s. And for certain moments, it wasn't really a bad thing, but on certain points, it felt corny and, and kind of cheesy. Scene where, I don't know, I think it was like a premiere for like gentlemen prefer blondes and whatever, and then everyone's watching it, whatever, and everyone like shoots out their, their seats and then they clap and there's like a sound effect of, as a high pitch like squirrel sound effect and I thought that was pretty goofy. And then like the, I guess like the infamous JFK scene and they literally like cut to the TV screen. And then if you've seen the film, you know, it's just like JFK, he's like butt naked. Things start going down and whatever. And then it kind of cuts to the TV screen of like a rocket alluding toward the male body parts. And I'm just like, okay. Okay, I don't know why. Honestly, that entire scene, I don't know why that was, that was a necessary, that was so not necessary. They could have done something else that would have been a little bit more effective, but the way they literally like drawn that out for way too long. And then on top of that, I felt like that scene was not really necessary. Like they could have like, you know, shown that their relationship was mostly sexual. I know the film was not supposed to be comfortable. I know it was supposed to be unsettling, but it's just like the way they went about it was very distasteful. I believe the main reason why the film doesn't really work is because the director of the film, Andrew Dominic, seems like he doesn't really like Marilyn Monroe. I read a bit of his interview with Christina Newland and Dominic comes off as cynical towards Marilyn. It seems he sees her in a very superficial way, which is ironic because the entire point of the film was to humanize her. Like, my guy, I think you lost the plot of your own film. He seems more interested in her aesthetic than her actual well-being, despite the claims that the film's point was to focus on the emotional side of Marilyn Monroe. But the film belittles her and chalks her up to nothing but a sad girl with daddy issues. So pretty much he made a Lana Del Rey movie with Marilyn as the avatar. And then the old bar swinging with the old stars and the other thing. Kissing in the blue dark playing pool and wild dogs and the other game. I don't know how to feel about that. Why bother doing a movie about her? I mean, my theory is that he wanted an excuse to play around with the aesthetic of classic Hollywood and 60s aesthetics. 
and center it around a figure that is easy to make into a blank slate. The image of Marilyn Monroe has been repurposed so many times to the point where she's no longer a person, but an object. Marilyn herself did such a great job reinventing herself and creating this mask for the public that we still don't have a great grasp on who she is to this day. So it's easy to create whatever personality you want onto her. And it doesn't hurt to have such a figure like her engage in artistic nudes and sex scenes for titillation. Marilyn's a sex symbol. It makes sense for the sex symbol to take her clothes off. Right? That is creepy. That is creepy. The, the, the Phil Heike kind of give like very creep. Leave this lady alone. God. When Lifetime, Lifetime had better restraint than you, you have messed up. Maybe I'm cynical, but this is the vibe I'm getting from the director. It's like the dude doesn't like Marilyn Monroe. He doesn't understand her cultural impact. He doesn't seem like he likes her material or, or, her, or her like body of work but yet he went through all the trouble to making a movie about her and it literally shows like it's very obvious he's not very interested in her but he's interested in her body it shows with all the the, the nude scenes and all like the the shot choices that is very objectifying like like Anna Diarmas's body and it's just framed in such a obviously sexual way and then the shot where she's like walking away with her like with her agent or whatever and then like there's like a vignette that closes around her butt but the entire point of the film was to prove to everyone that she was more than a sex symbol she was a person but yet the film goes out of its way to objectify and sexualize her. Like this film literally has three modes. It's like, it's either her having a nervous breakdown or it's just her being naked for no reason or it's her having sex. There's literally like no gradation to, to, to any of it. Like how many times have everyone literally keeps saying like all this information about her? It's just like she was more than skin like she was more than tna she was more than like uh titillation it's like yes she she did use her looks to get ahead yes she did use you know her her looks and you know flaunt it to you know get ahead get rose and stuff like that but she was she was more than that like she was more than that so like she was very smart like she was very intelligent and she very much like did not like the way that people literally just saw her as like this sexual being even though she herself says multiple times like hey like that's really not me even there's now speculation that maybe she has been asexual the entire time and it's like there's like so many things about Marilyn Monroe that you can like focus on it just focuses on her look while in the same breath literally try like wags wags his finger at you it's like oh how dare you like look at her and and like just think about her and her looks how dare you like think about her and her looks when the film was literally doing exactly that it's like contradictory, it's confusing, it's like, what is your point? I mean, like, Andrew Dominic says what his point was, but it's, it didn't really translate. In this interview, if I remember correctly, like, his entire point was to show the emotional side of Marilyn Monroe. Majority of her scenes is crying, but it's like, is that what you mean by, like, trying to figure out the emotional side of her, like just crying, like that's what you equate to. Th this is kind of sounding like high key, pretty sexist. Like you think being emotional equates to crying all the time. No, there's literally like more to it. God, this feels. And it's just so confusing and it's so like disingenuous. And it's so very like disrespectful to a woman that did not do nothing to him it feels very vitriolic towards Marilyn Monroe. If, if you wanted to like make a film revolving around like a, a beautiful female and, and you know, want to like talk about the seedy parts of Hollywood, okay, not really talk, more like engage, like actively engage in the seedy part of Hollywood, that's completely fine. It's just like, why in the world they had to bring in a woman who's literally spent her entire life being exploited and then you come in and you continue to exploit her while claiming that you're trying, that, while claiming that you're not. 
And that's literally the most frustrating thing. It's like the movie's very hypocritical. He doesn't really like her, but he knows using her image would get people talking. And the NC-17 rating was the cherry on top to really get people riled up. Anna de Armas' performance was excellent. She put her heart and soul into it. I do think she genuinely cared. It's a shame that her effort and talents were kind of wasted on a subpar project that could have been better. There are so many great sequences that could have been powerful, like Marilyn going to a movie premiere in the faces, mostly men, distort as they cheer and yell at her. But everything that leads up to the better scenes is not great and has very little to do with one another. It's a conveyor belt of tragic moments and it's non-stop and it's not edited well. And it doesn't allow Marilyn to be a fully realized person. The technical side of the film is fantastic but the writing box it down, especially these pseudo philosophical dialogue that comes across as very cringy. The film feels shallow and more interested in looking and sounding profound than creating an emotional humanizing portrait of an icon. There is so much more they could have done. The points where she is trying to be taken seriously as an actress is literally her strongest point. Like when she is talking to Arthur Miller about a part and how she feels about it and all her research that she's done on it. Like all that was like very fantastic. And then like the reaction from Arthur Miller, like, oh wow, like I just saw she was a dumb blonde. I didn't really think she was gonna like read my material and actually have a smart opinion on it. I didn't think this blondie could read. She could read and think for herself. Like all that stuff was good. I wish it was like more of that. And it will also like add to her character and also do a better job at humanizing her instead of just seeing her having like, like breakdowns. I mean, which is fine. It's fine to like show her like having like mental breakdowns and stuff because what she's going through is very traumatizing, very stressful. And so you don't blame her for having mental breakdowns. Her breakdowns is so frequent in the film. At a certain point, you don't really feel anything. And that's not good. I didn't finish it, but the, it was like, like the Lifetime miniseries, like the what portrait or something, or like the Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe. I know, it's produced by Lifetime, but this is sad when Lifetime does a better job than you. Lifetime. Like the Lifetime uh, biopic miniseries did a great job making Marilyn Monroe into a proactive character. Mind you, Lifetime is the same people that produced a Aaliyah biopic, a Britney Spears biopic, Elizabeth Taylor biopic. They are the dumpster fire of biopics. And you did a worse job than them? It couldn't be me because they show multiple aspects of her personality. And also, you know, they did get real about her mental health struggles. And like I said, these are the same people that literally exploited Aaliyah's story into a poorly produced biopic, but they did a better job of being respectful to Marilyn Monroe than you. I think that's a, the biggest sin of the film is like you have a director that's more interested in visuals not everything else like especially not not the writing portion because like the writing for this film is really not that great the dialogue is not that great at all i wouldn't even say it was average so it's very like below average like the only thing that's saving it is the actress who plays Marilyn monroe and like you know the cinematography like that's about it. i mean all the other act actors and actresses they do you know a, a decent job uh especially especially like uh what's his name Andrean Brody, who plays Arthur Miller. Yeah, he did a great job. That was perfect casting. Like he literally did look like Arthur Miller. Dominic just seems like he's more interested in the aesthetic of Marilyn Monroe, like the beauty of Marilyn Monroe, like the sex appeal of Marilyn Monroe, not much else. Yeah, after this one, no more. No more, no more, we done. No more Marilyn Monroe biopics, no more Marilyn Monroe documentaries. No more Marilyn Monroe books, none of that. None, we're, we're done. Leave this woman alone. Leave, like, leave, leave her alone. Whatever story you think you can do with Marilyn Monroe, trust me, you don't, you don't need to. It's not necessary. 
All right, we got experimental Marilyn Monroe with blonde. We got Marilyn Monroe from a, a rando's freaking perspective with My Week with Marilyn, which I kind of think is an okay movie. Uh, there's like The Secret Life of Marilyn Monroe, which I think pretty much is probably like the best interpretation of Marilyn Monroe. There's the 2000s blonde. All right, there's plenty of like Hollywood starlets that we can totally like do biopics on. Especially like starlets of color that we can totally do like Eartha Kitt, um, Anna Mae Wong, uh, Lena Horne. I mean, do another Dorothy Dandridge movie. Sure, why not? But yeah, that is it for my review of Blonde. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want more content like this, then please like, subscribe, hit the bell for notification for more videos. I'm going to, what am I gonna do? I'm going to wear nothing but Chanel number five and strut on the Hollywood Boulevard. See you later.